Hi, I'm Ursula, founder of The Right Hand LLC. The Right Hand is a network of virtual assistants with expertise of all sorts. We help business owners with tasks such as reservations, resumes, website design and management, social media management, marketing collateral in all forms, and much more. The Right Hand is your executive assistant resource without the overhead of an employee. How to manage time with 10 tips that work. I have my hands in so many different things that for a while I was challenged in managing my time wisely. I get the important stuff done first, of course, but sometimes I forgot things or felt frustrated because I didn't do enough in one day. My top priority is managing the right hand and making sure my client's needs are met. I have the luxury of mostly avoiding strict deadlines, so my schedule is flexible. My passion for riding my Harley has to fit in somewhere because that's my therapy. Articles and videos like this are a must in order to keep my SEO ratings up and to market my business. And of course, I have a ton of followers on social media to engage with from the broad journey, and I have to manage the SOX project for amputee veterans. Only true client work generates income. So here's how I manage time and have work-life balance. I recently found a wonderful article by Joe Matthews, Don DeBolt, and Deb Percival that really made me think and I want to share these tips with you. The full article can be found in the blog on my website. I used to try and micromanage myself with a schedule chock full of 15 minute intervals, but now I have incorporated a few methods to create my unique time management plan. This sentence struck me to my core. There are only three ways to spend time, thoughts, conversations, and actions. Regardless of the type of business you own, your work and life will be composed of those three things. So let's begin. 1. Carry a schedule and record your thoughts, conversations, and activities for a week. This will help you realize how much time is spent producing results and how much time is unproductive. 2. Any activity or conversation that's important to your success should have a time assigned to it. To-do lists can get to the point where they're unworkable and often hard to prioritize. Detailed calendars work. Schedule all activities and have the discipline to stick to it. Start with a standard calendar template and create your ideal day. Then rearrange your calendar as needed. Be sure to include drive time and five minutes before and after a call for prep and recap. If your best friend calls and you just have to talk to him or her, go back and adjust your calendar. Do this with all schedule adjustments, but keep the original entries so you can evaluate your success at staying on task. Evaluate your calendar at the end of every week. 3. Plan to spend at least 50% of your time engaged in thoughts, activities, and conversations that produce most of your results. Four. Schedule time for interruptions. As for me, I don't record in my calendar time for interruptions, but I do know that a breakfast or lunch, plus dishes for me, doesn't really take a half hour, so I can fudge that. I also know that I won't work on my book all the time that I have recorded, so I can finagle that too. When I get on the phone with a client, I indicate that I will take up to 30 minutes of their time, or I only have 30 minutes, and I prepare to close the call with five minutes remaining. I do use a timer for a great deal of my day. This is in part learning from another time management technique, plus I bill my clients in five minute intervals, so staying aware of my time means money to me and savings for them. Five, take the first 30 minutes of every day to plan your day. Don't start your day until you complete your time plan. As you may have noticed on my calendar, I first start the coffee and let my dogs out. Then I take a shower to energize. While in the shower and dressing, I typically do a quick run through in my head of what I think I need to do for the day. Then I spend 30 minutes organizing my day. I do this in line with responding to emails and social media as new information may impact my schedule. Take five minutes before every call and task to consider what result you want to attain. This time for preparation will also ensure you are not tardy. Take five minutes after each call and activity to determine whether your desired result was achieved. If not, what was missing? How do you put what's missing in your next call or activity? Schedule both of those five minutes into your calendar entries. I like to be proactive and thorough, so immediately following a call, I prepare a recap email to the parties involved. 
This not only reinforces the information in my mind, but allows me to compose my forward thoughts on the subject. Further to that, in my business, it shows good professional organization. 7. Practice not answering the phone just because it rings, not replying to emails just because they show up, and disconnect live chats and messengers. Don't instantly give people your attention unless it's absolutely crucial in your business to offer an immediate human response. Instead, schedule a time to answer emails and return phone calls. 8. Block out other distractions such as social media. I schedule my social media and by allowing only a certain amount of time, you'll learn not to get distracted by the things that truly don't add value to your life. 9. Put up a do not disturb sign when you absolutely have to focus on something particular. This can sometimes be a challenge both in a corporate setting and a work from home setting. If you work in a corporate setting, discuss with your colleagues that you find this practice most beneficial and you would appreciate it if they would respect this. If you work from a home office, it would be best to have a designated room that can be closed off. If you have a partner and or children, diligently teach them and discipline yourself that only the strictest of emergencies warrant interruption. As with any job, if you have children, get a sitter. I assure you that attempting to work from home with preschool children is not a fair or successful practice for the sake of your children or your job. 10. Remember that it's impossible to get everything done. Also remember that odds are good that 20% of your thoughts, conversations, and activities produce 80% of your results. As I mentioned early on, I personally use a combination of time management techniques. In the blog on my website, you can find articles about, about the technique living in daytight compartments and the Pomodoro technique, which entails a timer. Most recently, I've truly disciplined myself to follow my calendar as strictly as possible and have implemented not only the tips in this video, but also a bit from both of the aforementioned techniques. I am far, far happier with my results, and when I lay my head down at night, I feel accomplished. And remember, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. I hope this informational video has been helpful. If at any time you desire a little extra help in your endeavors, please contact me at the underscore right underscore hand at yahoo.com and we'll build a plan together.